so uh, shaiba you can go to the third slide uh, uh, thanks for the introduction i have uh, kept my introduction but shaiba i did a wonderful job thank you shaiba uh, uh, so uh, starting with uh, the data science presentation that i am planning for today uh, so uh, if you go back a uh, couple of years back and then uh, we see what data was so these were some of the things that uh, we used to think of data what is the name uh, what is the home address company and the uh, places they visited and uh, full food and all of those things that was uh, what we used to think of data uh, next slide shall we uh, and now uh, we see data to be present everywhere uh, that is uh, the data if we see is expanding at a rate that uh, human mind or human machines that were previously there was not capable to use that data as such so if you see a uh, uh, 100 years of high definition audio plus video was like only uh, around 60 to 65 petabytes of memory and now it has expanded so much that it is going into a uh, zettabytes uh, kind of a thing uh, where uh, i'm just putting this on a logarithmic scale so that we see how the data is being uh, expanded every year so there is huge data which is being uh, produced every year uh that uh, causes an abrupt in the industry for data science so that is where it uh, started with next slide uh if we uh, see uh the next slide there is a news article uh as when next slide uh we shows as we as as we have created up to 2003 your voice is breaking uh, is smile bye your voice is breaking so uh your your voice is breaking this is So, smile, but you, your voice is breaking. Sorry for that. मोबाइल से ले लो यार ओके आह इज इट बेटर ना या okay uh, we'll progress uh, uh, if there is anything then uh, we'll shift uh, the network so uh, apologies uh, everyone so uh, what i was saying was like every two days we are generating as much information as we did up to 2003 uh, this is just the data that we are generating and the next task which comes upon us is how do we uh, extract information and then from information the knowledge and from knowledge how do we extract wisdom for uh, doing uh our business so that is where all of these uh, uh things that you see in the market today uh is uh what it is about uh yeah next slide please now uh this is where uh, uh, every, uh company started to realize that uh, the data is the new oil we have seen this uh, as uh, uh, a very uh, important news article that triggered this uh, data science environment uh, uh, the usage of data science by the different companies and the adoption of different technologies and uh, processes by different uh, companies to use the data so uh, that is where the shift uh, from 2011 uh, shifted into uh, companies investing a lot into data science next slide please Uh, so if we think about uh, what a data science life uh, data life cycle is so uh, first thing is the data gets generated uh, from there uh, 
the data gets collected from different systems, uh, from a different uh, source system where the data is generated. And from those different source systems, uh, data gets processed uh, and is stored in uh, different data warehouses. Uh, from the data warehouse, we extract management reports, uh, provide analysis, and then uh, do a lot of visualization around data. Uh, and then finally, it is being used for interpretation. And then finally, uh, it goes into consumption by uh, different uh, uh, business st stakeholders. So this is what is the complete life cycle uh, of data. So uh, in this life cycle of data, there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of systems that gets involved into uh, making this feasible and uh, this is where the opportunity for data science and a uh, lot of data related uh, jobs came into picture. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this is another view of how the data is being seen. So uh, the first thing is we captured the data. So data acquisition, data entry, signal reception, data extraction. So these are all the different uh, ways that we uh, capture the data. So uh, we can either uh, get the data from different systems or we uh, put in a lot of sensors to uh, capture the data and then there comes the maintaining part so where uh, we have a lot of data warehousing uh, data cleansing data staging and then data processing so uh, here comes a lot of data architecture related things so how do we create uh, data warehouses and then store that data once that data is stored it goes into processing so uh, we have a lot Uh, is anyone saying something? Okay, uh, so uh, we see a lot of processing which happens uh, uh, and then uh, from the processing, uh, we go into analyzing the data, uh, do a lot of predictive analysis, regressions, text mining, uh, and then qualitative analysis, and then to uh, communicate these uh, uh, results, findings, and uh, decision making. So that is how uh, the complete life cycle of data uh, goes around. So uh, it starts from capture to using it for decision making. Next slide, please. So this is uh, how the big data landscape uh, was in 2012. So uh, if you think about uh, the complete data life cycle that I was talking about, so to maintain that or to process that data till uh, uh, management use or till predictive analysis. So these are different technologies that came into, uh, this was the big, big data landscape. So big data is a terminology that came into when uh, the data was uh, getting generated so huge that it was not feasible for people to use Excel or uh, standard data warehouse for analyzing the data. So that is where big data word came into. And then uh, this was the landscape back in 2012. Uh, we have a lot of uh, companies that came into, uh, which helps in uh, saving data, creating business intelligence, visualization tools, and then analytics uh, uh, infrastructure. And then we have uh, big data uh, tools, which helps storing a lot of data uh, and then uh, make those processing easier so that is what the big uh, big data landscape was so we are not going into details of any of those things but i was just showing you what big, big data landscape was back in 2012 and as the data increased uh, we saw uh, this landscape to uh, evolve more so uh, uh, next slide please now in the next slide we see how it has uh, evolved in 2021 so these are a lot of new companies new to new tools that came into for helping all of these things make possible so different companies take in uh, different uh, tools and technologies for making the uh, the journey of data or the life cycle of data uh, feasible so uh, we see a lot of companies coming into the picture uh, bringing in their services maybe in terms of cloud or in terms of uh, uh, on on-premise services, but uh, this is where every, uh, the landscape of big data has been changing. For, for so over ten years, uh, the landscape has changed from a couple of companies to now hundreds of companies helping uh, or coming into picture for uh, doing this uh, uh, managing the life cycle of data. Next slide. Please. So uh, so this was uh, introduction about the data. So uh, uh, and the different. Uh, 
stages where the data uh, goes through. Uh, now we'll go into what actually is uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, neural networks, and deep uh, deep net uh, deep learning. So. Uh, artificial intelligence uh, as we uh, normally hear so it is not a new term so this was uh, a term which was being used since 1950s uh, where research got started into artificial intelligence uh, people looking into techniques that can help uh, people uh, help us solve uh, data related problems so a lot of research was already being done in artificial intelligence only the hype that, that got is uh, after 2010 when uh, the landscape of data and the um, volume of data got uh, humongous. So artificial intelligence is any technique uh, where uh, machines help uh, solve problems for humans uh, and a subset of artificial, in artificial intelligence is machine learning. So machine learnings are all the algorithms that uh, learn from the data without explicitly being programmed. So what I mean over here without explicitly being programmed is uh, any trend in the data or any uh, I think uh, your voice has gone again. Uh, patterns in the data uh, human do not extract those patterns for machines to predict. Uh, is it better now? Yeah, it's better. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, machine learning is where uh, Recording. Hello? Yeah, you're back now. Please go ahead. Thank you. So machine learning, what I was saying about machine learning is uh, machine learning is where uh, we do not extract and give patterns to the data, but uh, the machine itself extracts the patterns from the data. Based on pattern, uh, the machine predicts uh, the event. So uh, whether we are uh, uh, programming for uh, hello, am I better now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in between, you are we are okay. losing you. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, if I get stuck anywhere, uh, you can just uh, stop me there. Okay. So, uh, you are generally machine learning uh, is the uh, Yeah, go ahead. Uh, any Okay, no. yeah. Go ahead. So, subset of machine learning comes uh, artificial neural networks. So, in neural networks, we uh, do not even create the features that goes into creating uh, or predicting using machine learning. So, in machine learning, we create features for the data. So, uh, maybe uh, if we think about any of the problem that we are solving, uh, if a human has to solve that problem, you will need some kind of information about that problem or for example if i'm thinking of any fraud detection system uh yeah, yeah. i think somebody unmuted that's why there was a noise okay go ahead please so uh, if you think of machine learning from uh, how a human operates, so uh, to just uh, give a simulation of human process data. So if a human has to identify some event, so for example, we will take a fraud. 
so maybe fraud you can think of any orders that customer is placing so uh, maybe uh, amazon or flipkart where the customer is placing uh, customer places an orders but many of the time customer places an order with an intention to fraud so maybe uh, to keep to get that product and then return it uh, with a duplicate product or any of those different kind of things that a human can do to uh, change the system or manipulate the system so uh, if you think of this as a use case uh, and just uh, put our thoughts across is so uh, if this fraud is happening in an e-commerce system and the uh, the management wants to see or predict what orders are being placed with fraudulent intentions and at the time of placing the order before it gets ships they want to stop these kind of orders now if this is the use case that we think about if a human has to solve this problem what a human does is like human will need lot of supporting data for that particular customer or that particular order by seeing those features or by seeing that information point uh, data points the human can decide if a uh, order which is in consideration or with a genuine intention now for human to decide he will need customers previous orders uh, customers uh, number of orders that the customer has placed in last 6 months or the customers uh, uh, return or the previous history what kind of items that the customers are usually uh, ordering is all the orders being ordered from electronics or or the orders uh, being placed at uh, high value points so these are all the important uh, data points or features that a human will need to see that data points and help decide whether the order in question is a fraudulent or not and similar kind of thing is being done in machine learning where we feed the machine with all of these data points and the machine builds patterns in the data and then create rules automatically and then when the new data comes in the machine predicts whether this new order is being placed with a fraudulent intention or is being placed with a genuine intention so in machine learning we create the data and create different features from the data and then provide that as an input to the machine learning and based on that the machine itself generates different patterns and rules in the data and when the new data comes in for prediction the machine will predict whether this new order is being placed with a fraudulent intention or a genuine intention based on that the uh, management can go ahead with uh, moving ahead with that order fulfilling that order or declining that order so this is what is being happening in machine learning but if we think of the next artificial neural networks or deep learning uh, so before we go into deep learning so what artificial neural network does is artificial neural networks creates in own features we do not have to create these features for the data and give that in artificial neural networks we give the raw input to the uh, artificial neural network which extracts these features on its own and then based on those features it predicts so uh, what uh, examples that we can think of in an artificial neural network or deep learning deep learning is like uh, image processing or sound processing uh, or video processing kind of uh, uh, use cases where the image is being consumed uh, there is some uh, someone who is not on mute so if you can okay so uh, in artificial neural network we think of use cases like image processing video processing or sound processing so if we think about a image processing kind of a thing we uh, the simplest task is uh, like uh, identifying if there is a threat in the environment so a uh, lot of banks uh, or lot, lot of financial institute use this use case so they have cctv cameras installed in a bank Uh, or uh, the area that uh, is being served for customer service or uh, different places they want they want to uh, secure the environment and based on that images which are being captured by cctv camera we extract whether there is a weapon which is being carried by anyone or not so uh, the 
video processes image by image, one image at a time, and at for each image, it identifies whether there is a weapon in that image or not. And based on that, it triggers slams. So if you think about this as a use case, now for from this image, we do not create features from this image. So we cannot create different features from uh, the image. So image is like a data points uh, spread in a matrix kind of a thing uh, where each of these, each of these single pixel is a value, a value of uh, red, blue, and green. So red, blue, and green values for each pixel is what the data is. But from the, this image, we do not create any features. We, we provide this raw image to an artificial neural network. And based on this, the network itself creates features. And once these features are created, uh, it uses those features for predicting whether there is a weapon uh, in customer's hand or in someone's hand, uh, or is it safe? So this is where uh, artificial neural network comes in. Uh, deep learning is a subset of artificial neural network where we deploy very, very deep networks. So it is more of an advanced layer of uh, artificial neural networks where we uh, develop neural networks, uh, uh, of a tune which is like uh, having networks going into tens of thousands of layers of networks. So once we go into uh, the structure, we'll uh, be able to understand that clearly. So uh, is, <clears throat> is this understanding uh, of artificial intelligence, machine learning, neural networks and deep learning uh, clear? So was I uh, able to uh, communicate this properly? Was my audio properly? <clears throat> yeah, okay. alhamdulillah. Yeah. So uh, this is a very, uh, very important slide that talks about uh, what are the different uh, major components of data science. So artificial intelligence is overall, uh, then comes machine learning, and the subset of it is an artificial neural network, and is the next is deep learning. So we'll go into uh, details of these things in the subsequent slides. Yes, the next slide. Uh, now, uh, these are some of the use cases that I have put in for machine learning. So, uh, uh, when we think of machine learning, so uh, one example that I uh, gave was like fraud detection, whether uh, fraud can happen at the, any of the stages of the new companies that which are uh, coming up. So, uh, e-commerce websites, uh, banking websites, uh, any of these websites, they can be fraud at any level. Uh, so uh, the customer, uh, the management wants to avoid uh, or minimize the fraud that are happening at all the levels. So uh, there are companies which help uh, in identifying the fraud even at account creation level. So even when you create the account at that level only, we identify where, whether this account is being created for fraud or not. So based on the patterns with the customer creates the account. So for example, if a customer is creating the account and we see normally it takes five minutes for a customer to create an account and then people with fraudulent intention create bots or create new systems, which automatically creates accounts. So it autofills the information, it autofills the data points with predefined kind of a, uh, email IDs. And then these autofilling kind of thing happens in a couple of seconds. So this is some trends that came out from machine learning. So this is an example, again, an example of fraud detection at account creation level. So when the customer is being created account, we create a lot of features from uh, the account creation process itself. Uh, and based on those features, it is being uh, put into a machine learning, which identifies these patterns. And then uh, based on these patterns, whenever a new customer comes in, create an account, uh, the data is being captured from that account being processed by the machine. And then it gives an output saying that whether this is a fraud account or a non-fraud account kind of thing. So uh, this is where uh, one more example of fraud detection comes in. A uh, lot of these, uh, so if we go about uh, traffic prediction, so traffic prediction is like uh, uh, traffic prediction on the website. So uh, you see during Amazon sales or Flipkart sale or any of the sale period. So the traffic, uh, gets uh, the usual amount of traffic is not what it is uh, during those sales. So uh, you can think about 
it as an any event of a e-commerce website on an online website we want to predict what is the traffic that comes in the next couple of hours and based on that we uh, dedicate servers for processing the traffic so this is like uh, uh, identifying the demand and supply on uh, the website so uh, next is search engine results so we have been uh, using search engine results so whenever we type anything on google uh, it gives a lot of results so based on that search engine is being used across all the industries and uh, all the websites that are present so if you go on any of the websites you see a search bar on top of it and based on that uh, the search results comes in the the level of that search engine determines the experience that the customer gets for example if you write in something like uh, something that you are buying maybe on from a grocery you are buying something like eggs a simple thing if you are buying eggs and you search for eggs but the search result was not competent enough it did not search for egg but it searched for eggs and the items that were saved in the database was saved with the names eggs now this will not give the results until and unless you write exact sent exact alphabet e g g so without any s when you write this only in this case uh, the search will give the results uh someone saying something no, there was a noise, so I just unmuted it. Okay. Uh, so uh, I was telling about the, the search. So based on uh, how the search engine uh, is being developed, different search engine gives different results. And if the search engine is not built properly, then the user will not have a pleasant experience with the website or uh, any any of the uh, things that the customer is interacting. And then uh, the customer will not uh, repeat those websites. So that is where search engine comes in. So a lot of uh, text mining and text processing goes into uh, defining these search engine search results. So uh, Google is one of the most advanced search engine uh, in the world, so everyone knows it. <coughs> But search engine is being used in every uh, e-commerce website or any of the uh, e-commerce or uh, any of the websites which provides any any kind of service. So you see search engine being used in every website or uh, any of these apps as well. So if you go on an app, you, you will uh, start with the search. So based on how the search result brings in the information back, uh, it, de uh, it defines the user's experience. So that is the one thing. Next is uh, fraud detection. I already talked about uh, the other area is medical diagnosis. So a lot of uh, diagnosis uh, are being uh, light of a lot of uh, uh, hospitals these days are deploying advanced diagnosis using uh, medical uh, history. Uh, they are companies which works on customers' uh, previous uh, prescribed medicines and uh, the results from there and the uh, scan images, x-ray images, and then uh, either it predicts the disease or it identifies the right disease, which helps doctor as doctors get some kind of an assistance kind of a thing. So a uh, lot of doctors uh, are getting assistance from uh, these medical diagnoses to help them uh, uh, help uh, identify the right disease at the right time. And then there are uh, text and speech recognition. So uh, text is uh, something that I already talked about. Speech is like uh, there are many, uh, many of these companies are uh, defining this search with the help of uh, audio. You can just click on the audio button and then ask for any of these uh, search. Um, and then uh, you can just speak about it and then uh, it gives the result. So a uh, lot of uh, things have happened in speech recognition like uh, uh, you know about uh, Alexa, Siri, uh, and all of these products which comes in. Uh, you can just speak to uh, that systems, and then it converts your speech into text and then uh, information. Uh, you can keep uh, placing your orders directly from Alexa. You can just create a list of all uh, items to be ordered. Uh, you can just uh, mention it to Alexa or any of these apps. It creates a, those lists and then add uh, items to your cart and then you can just place those orders. So uh, this is where uh, uh, machine learning comes into. Uh, then we have email spam filtering, image recognition and all of those things. So uh, email uh, spam is like um, uh, you want to segregate between uh, the emails that are coming from uh, different spams or 
uh, it is not a spam, it is genuine email. So uh, we uh, have a lot of use cases into this. So these are different use cases for machine learning that are into picture. Uh, I think uh, we can go to the next slide, Chairman. Now, if we go into how these, uh, what are the different algorithms uh, behind these for making these things uh, uh, feasible are uh, these kind of algorithms, which I'm showing over here. So if we talk about uh, uh, what the different algorithms are, now, basically these are divided uh, into supervised learning and unsupervised learning. And the third part is reinforcement learning. So these are the three broad categories of algorithms which are being used in a machine learning environment. So uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and then uh, reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, then we have uh, regressions and classification. And then from regression, we have uh, various other kinds of uh, algorithms which can be used to solve regression problems. So uh, I will briefly explain you uh, all of these uh, uh, broad categories of uh, algorithms which are present. I will not go into each of these individual algorithms, but broad categories of algorithms. So if we think about supervised learning versus unsupervised learning. So what is different in a supervised versus unsupervised learning is the target that we are solving for. So uh, in supervised learning, we already know what the target is. So fraud versus non-fraud. So we know the target. We know uh, some of the, uh, so when we create any of these models or when we uh, train the model, when we develop these models, we have some data points or uh, customer's data, which is already being categorized as these are the orders which were fraud. These were the orders which were non-fraud. So uh, again, continuing with the same example of orders, uh, and frauds in, into uh, the system. Uh, so historically, we have seen the data. So we use historical data to train the model. And then <clears throat> when the new data comes in, we predict on the new data. So when we are training the model or developing the model, uh, we use historical data. And the historical data is already uh, labeled with uh, the target. So the tar target over here is being uh, said as zero or one or yes or no kind of a thing. We say these were the rows which we detected fraud to be, and these were the rows which detected uh, has, uh, as genuine order. So we already know the data and the target for this. And based on this, the models are developed. So this is an example of supervised learning where in the training part, we already know which data points were frauds, which data points were non-frauds. Using this, we train the model and then uh, use this to predict the new data. So this is an example of supervised learning. And in an unsupervised learning, we do not have any target. So we actually work on the data, customer's data without target. Now, without target, we are solving some problem. Those set of problems are different. Now, these problems are like customer segmentation kind of a thing where we want to create segments or clusters of similar kind of a customer. Now, these are like, uh, we do not know which customer to put in which cluster or even we do not know how many clusters should be formed. So clusters are being formed maybe for some kind of a marketing. So uh, if the e-commerce website or any of the uh, company wants to send some kind of a marketing campaign, uh, we, we will not send a same campaign to everyone. So we divide the customers into different smaller segments and each of the segment, we identify what is the need of that segment and based on that customized campaigns are, or customized marketing uh, emails or SMS are being sent to those kind of segments. But how do we define how many clusters should be formed or how many segments to be formed or which customer to be uh, put in which kind of a cluster? So these kind of problems are being, uh, is an example of unsupervised learning where we do not have the target predefined, but we want the machine to look into the features and then bring similar kind of customers together and dissimilar customers in a different Customer, uh, cluster or segment. This is uh, where uh, we use unsupervised learning. So this is broad categorization of algorithms between supervised 
and unsupervised. In supervised, now there are two different kinds of algorithms that we uh, work basically. One is classification and other is regression. In classification, uh, we identify which customers need to be put in it, which kind of a class. So classification is again kind of same thing that I was talking about the fraud. So uh, should this order be placed into a fraud or a non-fraud? So we have two categories and the customer needs to be classified between these two categories. They can be three categories or four categories as well uh, they, that are advanced uh, algorithms. So if we want to classify any of the customer into different uh, classes, so that is where we uh, use classification. Now regression is a different kind of a, a problem solving where we actually identify the actual value of that customer. So maybe if we are like uh, building a model to predict the sales from each customer. Now uh, we want to predict what is the sale coming from each of the customer or how many orders which will the customer place uh, each customer place in the next one year. So this is kind of a, uh, output which is kind of a continuous invariable that is like some customers can place one order two three four five six and this is like the output can be a continuous variable maybe from one to hundred or one to ten thousand so that number of orders can be anything so in regression we are again predicting a variable which is continuous in nature uh, so that is where uh, we see regression kind of algorithm so uh, in supervised learning, we know the target based on that uh, we define uh, or we develop the models. In supervised learning, we have two things, classification, where we want to put customer in either of the class, class one or class two or class three, whatever we have. But in regression, we want to predict what the value is and the value can be continuous in nature. Uh, is this part clear? Uh, just want to know, uh... Uh, in unsupervised uh, learning, the target is not clear, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, but here the slide says that we are going for forecasting. So, uh, here then the target uh, will be known to us. Supervised learning, we already know the target for historical data. Okay. Using historical data with the known target, we create the model and the model will learn the data patterns from the historical data and then it will create rules internally. Now, when the new data comes in, we will use that data to predict what that customer will be. So maybe we use last one year historical data of orders and see how many orders were fraud, how many orders were non-fraud. Based on this, we develop the model. Now, once the model is moved into production, a new order comes in, a customer plays a new order. For this order, we do not know what the target is. So we do not know whether this new order is a fraud or a non-fraud. So this data will be fed into the model and the model will predict whether this is a fraud order or non-fraud order for the new data points. So when we are training the model, for the historical data, we have the target. Once the model is trained for the new data, which is coming in, we do not have the target. So we will use this model, which is trained based on historical learnings, based on historical rules and patterns. Whenever the new data comes in, we use the data point of that order and then categorize or flag that order, whether this is a genuine order or a fraud order kind of a thing. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, I think I have missed the reinforced slide. I think I have missed the reinforced Sorry. Uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, I I went still uh, went into there. So uh, supervised learning is, uh, again, uh, just to summarize, supervised learning is where historical data is being used. For the historical data, we have the target. We know what orders are fraud, what orders are not fraud. We use historical data to train the model. And the new data which comes in, we do not know what kind of uh, order this new data is. We use the model to predict that. 
that is where supervised learning comes into uh, it is divided into classification and regression classifications when the target is like limited number of classes either fraud or non fraud or class 1 to 3 kind of a thing we use classification when the output is a continuous variable it can be a value any numeric value maybe between 100 uh, 0 to 100 or 1 to 100 or any of any of the value when it is continuous we use regression like for example uh, detecting some uh, identifying someone's salary or identifying someone's age or identifying what are the uh, orders which will come in the next uh, financial year from each customer so the output is a continuous variable so uh, these are the examples of regression in unsupervised learning uh, we have clustering uh, which is a basic uh, uh, one of the most important use algorithms in unsupervised learning where we uh, put customers into different segments or clusters we do not know predefined or previously or historically we do not know where this customer might fit into or where this customer might go into or even we do not know how many clusters should we divide our customer base into so based on this algorithm we identify how many clusters should be defined or how many segments should we define or should we have for our complete customer base and the, based on that which customer to be put in which kind of a cluster based on similar kind of a behavior between those customers we put customers into different segments dimension reductional dimensional uh, reduction is one technique where uh, which is being used in ten, uh, which is which is being used by different models uh, the main idea of uh, dimension reduction is like if uh, we are working on any of the problems that we are working on if there are like hundreds and uh, thousands of features uh, or if the features goes into uh, thousands of features then it is very difficult for uh, these machine learning algorithms like classification regression or clustering to process that huge data so maybe if we are if we think of uh, 1 million customers uh, each of these customers having uh, 1 million uh, features or 10000 features so this data is so huge that it becomes very difficult for a machine to identify patterns or learn patterns so it needs a supercomputer to be processed uh, in those case uh, dimensional reduction, uh, dimensional uh, reduction comes into which helps reduce number of uh, features uh, maybe it can uh, reduce 10000 features into 10 to 15 kind of features and then these 10 to 15 kind of features or variables for customers will be used in different uh, classification regression clustering algorithms uh, reinforcement learning is one area which has a feedback loop into any of the algorithms that we talk about so reinforcement learning will have a feedback real time feedback loop back to the training which uh, will help evolve the model and it will keep on bettering itself as it move forward so uh, if we think about a fraud detection model so we train fraud detection model based on historical data and then we move that data uh, based on that data we created the model train the model and put in production a new data comes in customer plays an order the model predicts this as a non fraud so model predicts this as a genuine but at a later point of time we came to know that this was actually a fraud order now this data is being fed to the model and then the model learns from that prediction which went wrong so this is where reinforcement learning uh, kind of models comes into these are all the broad categories of machine learning algorithms uh, we can go to the next slide now uh, if someone has any questions unless uh, in uh, so uh, that was uh, everything about machine learning uh, use cases of machine learning and uh, different algorithms of machine learning now we go into deep learning or artificial neural networks. Now, uh, some use cases of artificial neural networks are autonomous cars, uh, virtual assistants, face recognition, chatbots. Uh, all of these are like uh, use cases of deep learning. So uh, autonomous cars is one area where a lot of research is being done. So uh, most of the use cases of artificial neural network or deep learning 
uh, are uh, being used at a very high level or are into advanced stages of machine learning. But most of the algorithms of machine learning are already being into a uh, application by different companies or being used uh, by different companies. But use cases of deep learning are still limited to a uh, less number of companies, plus a lot of research is still being happening on this. So autonomous car is one area where uh, research is being happening for a long time, but it did not came to market. So a lot of these things are into uh, advanced stages of uh, research. But if we talk about free cell recognition or image processing, so this is into the market. So uh, we already use this maybe in our phones to unlock our phones. So we have our phones uh, to be unlocked just by uh, recognizing, recognizing the face. So facial recognition is one thing which is broadly used across different mobiles. Uh, for unlocking the phone. So then we have chatbot. So if you go on any of the chatbots, uh, the first initial discussions will always happen with, with an autonomous robot kind of a thing, uh, which will try to resolve most of the known queries which are there. And once it was not able to resolve that, only then a human is being involved into that. So if you go on any of the chat, uh, you chat with a robot most of the time in the initial part of your discussion. And as you move forward, uh, if your issues were not solved, then uh, a human is being brought into the picture. So these are some of the use cases of deep learning or artificial neural networks. Uh, next slide. Yeah. So this is a broad uh, overview of artificial neural networks. So uh, I'm not going into much details of what these layer networks are. So uh, I'm just giving an idea of how these uh, neural networks are uh, being used. So if you see the first one, single layer perceptron. So this is like, it takes two as input units. So two green units are input units. So it accepts some, some kind of an input. It processes the information only in one layer. So there is only one layer of processing. And based on that, uh, uh, the output is being identified. So that blue dot is an output. So based on two input points, uh, it just process one layer of processing is being happening over here. And then based on that, a blue output is being uh, sent in. Next is the radial bias. So we have two input layers and uh, sorry, two input points or a one layer of input, one hidden unit, and then one output. So this uh, is how a neural network is being defined. So it has some kind of a input layer and then it has multiple layers. So all of these orange dots are hidden layers or different layers in between. And then based on that, it gives some kind of an output. Now in neural networks, we create different kind of architecture of these uh, networks. So we have multi some networks which have multiple hidden layers, some have some smaller number of hidden layers, some have larger number of hidden layers. Based on these different complex networks are being formed. And based on these complex networks, the predictions are being made. And a lot of research is being done in this area. What is that different kinds of networks that can be used? And uh, some of these are already live and some of them are being more uh, research happening into the field as to what is that different kind of networks or what network will give best result or better result for different use cases. So no network, no one layer of network or one architecture of network will help solve all the different kinds of problems. So for image processing, we might use a different network architecture for a video processing, we might use some different thing. For a chatbot, we might use a different architecture kind of a thing. So this is where uh, we talk about the architecture of a neural network, not the algorithms of neural network. Uh, this is just an overview of how it is being used. Uh, yes, next slide. So uh, this is one example of how uh, uh, we uh, use deep neural networks. So if we talk about a image processing, so first is the image that is being fed. So uh, if you see there is a car, uh, is, that is an image. Now image is a combination of pixels. Pixels are like each pixel is a representation of three values, red, blue, and green. So each pixel is combination of these three values. 
which come together to form the image. Now, if we have to predict from this image, we will not create features of the images. So uh, when we talk about uh, creating the features of orders kind of thing, so we talk about uh, creating features like how many orders were placed by the customer, what kind of orders were being placed, and all of those uh, different features that we create from the customer and then feed it. But for a neural network, we will not create those features. We will define some kind of an, a layers which will extract these informations or these features. So it will extract kind of like dots, straight lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines, and all of those things, and then combine these to form a higher uh, level features. And then it goes on to finally predict what kind of a car was this or what, what kind of problem uh, if we are trying to solve, uh, what kind of problem we are trying to solve. And based on that, uh, we train the model to give that output. This is a general overview of what neural networks does and how it does. Next slide, please. So uh, this uh, is where uh, we go into what data science is actually after talking about AI, machine learning, and neural networks. So what data science is, it is about recognizing or identifying the rules or what patterns were there in the data to apply to that different data points and then predict the output of that. So this is where uh, data science is being used as a terminology which uses across all uh, the functionality of all of these uh, different tools and techniques that I talk about. So uh, next yeah. slide. Hello, Go ahead. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Next slide, Shadwick. Uh, so if you think about uh, data science of, of, of the big picture, so we have deep learning, we have machine learning, we have artificial intelligence. And on top of that, there is data science, which is like, uh, which uses artificial intelligence, which uses machine learning, which uses deep learning, but that is not what data science is. So data science is the combination of these tools plus the business plus the coding. So this, all of these three components make what data science is. So data science uses deep learning, it uses machine learning, it uses artificial intelligence, but then the domain expertise of which domain that problem is being solved and how do we do that coding is where the data science comes into. So it is a combination of all of these skills plus the business or the domain understanding and how do we implement that in terms of coding. Uh, that is where the combination makes this as a data science. So we will not use all the machine learning concepts or we will not use all the deep learning or art artificial neural network concepts. We use some of the algorithms for our use case, but how do we use is based on the domain understanding. So uh, based on what domain we are working for, what, how do we solve that problem for, based on that, we pick what is the best use case or what is the best algorithm which can help us solve this, this kind of a machine learning, uh, with this kind of a problem, maybe using a machine learning or a deep learning or an artificial intelligence, or based on just basic different rules that we can define. Based on these, and the use case that we are solving for, we bring in that domain expertise, plus the data science uh, skills of algorithms of machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence together to solve any problem. Uh, the major uh, importance of domain knowledge comes into when we are creating these features. So machine learning will create rules from the features that we create, but how do we create these features? it comes from the domain expertise. Uh, it's not that uh, we can just feed in the data uh, and then help deep learning solve our problem. That is not how it happens. So deep learning are different algorithms where it doesn't need features, but it will not solve all the problem. So for many of the problems, we use machine learning. And for machine learning, we need to create these features from the data. Now the features, how do we create the features comes from domain or business understanding. So if we uh, again go back and talk about the same example of fraud detection of orders, when we are creating these 
features like how many orders were placed by the customer. Now, this is one feature. Uh, number of orders placed in electronics. This is one feature. Now, how many electronics orders were placed to the ratio of how many total orders were placed? This is one feature. So we create these different kinds of features which will help machine learn. But how do we bring in these features is something which comes from business or domain understanding. That is where data science has some concepts from business uh, and plus the way that you will uh, do all of those things. So you will need some kind of a coding platform or a platform where you can uh, create these features and create these rules or train the model. So that is where uh, data science is fitting over here. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll uh, leave some of these examples. So uh, just uh, next slide, next. Next, next, and uh, next, 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 and yeah, next. One more. Yeah. So uh, that were all the different use cases or uh, things where we can use data science. But uh, we'll now uh, go uh, into the career opportunities which comes into uh, with uh, these different things. So uh, we talk about data, how it is expanding, what is the landscape of data, and then different tools and technologies that came into. Uh, so with these also came a new uh, area of career opportunities into the field. So there are a lot of uh, career opportunities which revolve around these uh, technologies or tools. So uh, we start with data analysis. So I've just put in a, a small description of that thing. Uh, so data analyst uh, is someone who just works on data, see what is happening in the data and then uh, create or identifies patterns from those, those rules without deploying any of these uh, machine learning tools. Now we have data engineers, which build this complete ecosystem of making these uh, data usage possible. So it is like big data ecosystems, which uh, data engineer works on uh, because data is generated at source systems or the processing system uh, and data, which is being generated from different sources needs to be moved into one platform or a data warehouse. So data engineers comes over there, which helps move different information. So if we think about uh, e-commerce website only, so there are different systems, one system for creating a uh, orders, one for payments, one for addresses, delivery, and then logistics, uh, supply chain. So all of these are different systems, but data engineers comes in to bring in the information from different systems, put it in a data warehouse from where it can be used to uh, get all the information so, of a particular customer. Sorry? Hmm. sorry? No, you, you can okay. go ahead. Yeah, next is business intelligence. Business intelligence comes into where we talk about a lot of reporting and dashboarding of what is happening, how many customers are placing orders and all types of, all types of uh, reporting on historical data or real-time reporting or dashboarding. So that is where business intelligence comes into. These are the uh, career uh, roles where people work on Tableau, Power BI, uh, or any other reporting tools to use data to... Uh, give that to uh, the people who are working in the business. So maybe sales, marketing kind of people or the top management to see what is happening. So business intelligence is that area. The next is database administrators, which actually manages the data. Uh, how do we uh, solve that? And all of those things is being done by data administrators, database administrators. Next is machine learning engineers. So uh, these are the people who actually maintain those machine learning models which are already placed and put into production. So uh, each company will have already uh, developed a lot of machine learning algorithms which are moved into production. Now, uh, how do we maintain those machine learning algorithms, make them work on a daily basis and then see if there are any issues coming in due to any uh, changes in data or any other thing. So that is where machine learning engineer comes in. Uh, data scientists are those people who actually provide solutions using data, not necessarily using uh, machine learning or AI or neural networks. So these, these are the areas that will be used. Plus they can be, um, it, uh, they can be solutions which do not use any of these things just based on some rules or some uh, kind of uh, 
different kind of an analysis which is not being provided by a business intelligence report. Uh, all of those things are being done by data scientists. Uh, next is data architect, uh, which actually defines how the uh, enterprise should have the architecture of data, what data lakes, data warehouses should we have, how the data moves from one system to another system. So all of those things are being done by data architects. Next, we have statisticians, which actually goes into creating some kind of uh, deeper understanding and creating new algorithms or new uh, techniques for solving different problems. Uh, next, we have business analysts. So business analysts are people who understand business and who understand uh, data science. And then they use these things uh, to solve different problems uh, using data. So that is where business analysts comes in. Next is data science and analytics manager. So these are as you grow up the ladder, so you are going to manage managerial position. So that is what uh, uh, we are uh, called as uh, data science and analytics manager. So, and there are a lot of new terms which are being coined every day, uh, new uh, career opportunities which are coming up in the complete ecosystem of data. So these are all the different uh, uh, career opportunities revolving around data and data science to make all of these feasible. Uh, that is where opportunities in data uh, and then um, specifically in data science or a data scientist kind of thing. Uh, there are a lot of openings around uh, which are coming in companies uh, which will need people to understand what data science is plus how they can implement that in their businesses. That is where uh, the uh, data, data science comes into. Uh, more prominent predominantly because uh, it is not restricted to only computer science or data, um, data science tools and algorithms but it is about how do you implement it and how do you measure that and how do you make that project successful uh, maybe if we take a comparison of any of the it projects so uh, if we talk about any of the it project we know where we have to reach so this is what we have this is how we have to maybe uh, a, an example of a creation of any application. So this is how we want to create that application for. We are already knowing what to do and how do we reach that target. But what makes data science a unique is like, we ourselves need to define what success parameters is. How do you define success for these projects? So uh, some projects might give you a very good results in terms Impact them, might not give that kind of a benefit. That is very important. How do you measure? How do you connect business with the data science project? So that is where it makes uh, the concept a bit unique. Uh, that is uh, what uh, different career opportunities are. Uh, is there any question, or we can move forward? I think we are coming to the end of our presentation. Um, sure. Hello. Um, yeah. Sure. Hello. Yeah, you, you can you can sure. if you have any questions. So uh, regarding the hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, please Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Sir. Yeah, Walaam Islam. <clears throat> sir, uh, actually, right now I'm working in a mechanical field and wanted to shift uh, to data science. Um, please guide me to how things enter in the field as a beginner. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, Ismail, you have shared the links, right, for Coursera courses. So those are paid courses, right? Those are free courses. Uh, actually, it is showing, uh, I mean, when I try to look into it, that is not free. It is showing some three months, six months, four months like that it is showing. And also, yeah, we can, we can connect on our uh, training group and then resolve that issue. Not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, where, where this link has been shared for the courses, it's in the chat. No, that is a different thing. Uh, that is a different question. Uh, it is not related to uh, this presentation as such. So we already started with one batch of training that was related to that. 
Okay. Okay. So there are a couple of Hello. questions in the chat box as well. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Waalaikum Assalam. Uh, I just wanted to know. Okay, I mean, you have any plans? Because I saw that in the message that you guys are planning to. Najma. That. That is what. Uh, okay, I, I mean, uh, you have any plans to start on the weekend classes? Yes, I am going to that slide. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. So there is one more question: which other authority, like uh, Cisco and Microsoft, Google, accept them? In which other authority accreditation provision is there for data scientist? From brother. Uh, sorry. Uh, question. Yes. Now, brother Gayasuddin, if you want to ask the question, you can go ahead. Assalamualaikum sir. Assalamualaikum. Yes. Yeah, greetings to everyone here and respected sir. Assalamualaikum. Assalam. Am I audible? Yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, actually myself as Cisco certified network associate in clouding and including router and switching also. Beside uh, pursuing my MSc in computer applications, sir, I want to focus on the Asia node as my students. Always ask this: Why we are slave to the American technologies, and why so so many engineers from our Asian race are slave to the best remarkable sites to Google, Microsoft, and Cisco's? When we are going through this uh, future technology of data science, at a very good seminar you are organizing here online. So, what effort we can put as a single race here for our country, India, first of all, our nation? so that we can make a network plus uh, data hub here only dependency on google is like slavery of the next generation that that's why i am asking is there any accreditation available from other industrial uh, also so that we can authorize the certification rather than cisco google and microsoft that's all my question about thank you sir uh yeah so uh, thanks for your question so i think uh, it is uh, Overall, on uh, the infrastructure, how the infrastructure is around uh, data science and uh, data. So, hello. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Sir. Yeah. So, uh, it is more of uh, uh, these days uh, for any data scientist to work, we do not need any certification as such. So, it's based on skills and how do you provide. Uh, or build yourself. So we do not need any certification as such to be in the field. Uh, plus, uh, it is more predominantly because Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and uh, Google has created that kind of cloud-based storage services, which are being used by different companies uh, into pictures. So uh, if, some, if we come up with that kind of a, a solution around data, then uh, obviously we can move from different those companies to other companies. But as of now, there is uh, no big company which provides these kind of cloud-based services for data or processing capabilities uh, for processing these data. So uh, cloud-based services like Amazon Web Services or uh, Google-based services, Google Cloud Platform, these platforms are so evolved that uh, just on a button click, you can uh, create servers for your processing. That is where these are being predominantly used. But if there are new tools which are coming into the market or new technologies in the market, so uh, we can start using that as well. But that is basically about the infrastructure total. Uh, that is what I have to say for that. Uh, for the first question on uh, machine. Uh, yeah, uh, for the first question that uh, we have or uh, uh, sorry mechanical uh, to uh, data science. So uh, there are two things that you can do. Uh, either you can stay in your field and then see what different things that you can you, uh, do in machine learning or data science in uh, mechanical. You can show uh, any uh, uh, kind of uh, profiles which focus only on data science as a concept, not on 
domain i will suggest you be in your domain and then uh shift into data science because domain expertise is one thing that is very 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 valuable in any of the field of data science uh, if you are a fresher and then you are you want to <clears throat> move into data science then you can move into any domain irrespective of what kind of graduation you did it is based on how do you uh, understand the concepts and how do you implement those concepts uh, and uh, how you create your profile uh, there are a lot of websites which give these competitions where you can participate in those com competitions and then create your profile make your profile stronger or there so there are a lot of websites like kaggle which give rankings on uh, different problems that you are solving you can take any of the problems solve that based on the results you will get a ranking and then you can use that kind of a ranking to uh, get a job into uh, different companies which are looking for data science professionals assalam alaikum sir walaikum assalam uh, sir i am mechanical engineer with uh, four years of experience actually i am confused uh, between aws and uh, data analyst i am unable to decide which course should i take uh, i i just want to know how data analyst uh, analyst course or data scientist is better than aws or cloud computing or how, uh, how okay. can i uh, take that course uh, in a very efficient way or easy way yeah uh i think uh, the answer to that is like uh, there is no field uh, one field above another field so all of the fields are equally important and that uh, we cannot say which field is more important kind of a thing uh, each of the field has a requirement for people and uh, expertise which is being needed in a, all of these departments so aws is one uh, very good field as well uh, being in cloud plus uh, uh, data science or data engineer so any of the field uh, is equally good and equally important but the thing is like you will have to see uh, which field uh, are you able to uh, understand things and uh, where your interest lies that is where uh, it will help you maybe you can take a one introduction introductory kind of a session for uh, or take a free course on uh, both the concepts that you are looking for and then see which uh, field you are able to grasp concepts more efficiently and which interests you more based on that you can uh, move forward but as such there is no one best field for uh, into data science sir can you suggest any uh, institute or course for data science uh yeah so uh, there are a lot of uh, free courses plus one training that we are uh, shy by if you can go to the next slide uh so uh, this is where uh, we are uh, also uh, launching our training program where uh, we will have a hybrid kind of a uh, training where uh, we will have uh, one uh, instructor led session followed by uh, a week of self learning plus uh, project development or project building uh, and then we'll uh, have uh, subsequent weeks for discussions of those problems so uh, we have planned uh, a training program which constitutes of all of these concepts of machine learning and uh, introduction to neural networks plus uh, most uh, of these courses will be like a combination of instructor led sessions plus uh, online courses which will be like three courses plus we'll have projects where uh, he, uh, projects will be given uh, to the candidates who can work for, on that project for a week and then come back with the results and then uh, we will discuss those results kind of a thing so this is how we have planned to uh, take this training uh, in our uh, uh, group but if you want uh, any additional uh, kind of support then we have lot of uh, trainings being provided by different institutes or, or uh, specialization course by different uh, uh, websites like coursera or data uh, or data breaks kind of thing or different things uh, different websites uh, or different institutes which provides these trainings uh, there are a lot of uh, online material as well as well youtube channels plus uh, online blogs uh, competitions which happen so these are all the different training materials uh, you can either use them or uh, uh, we are also starting with this program we will uh, 
where uh, I will be uh, or our team will be bringing in the best tools and best uh, platforms which will help learn uh, data science and practice on real-time projects, uh, industry-related data. So this is where we are also uh, starting uh, our program with. Uh, the duration of the program will be like four to five months based on how we move uh, or uh, if the candidates are interested to uh, take additional uh, industry uh, uh, real-time data related projects then we can have one more month or one more month of uh, uh, projects uh, around uh, that period so but this is how we have planned for uh, and then uh, we will be modifying the program as we move forward based on the requirement of the batch uh, we have started with the program last week uh, and uh, we will be continuing to do that uh, and then uh, take in more batches for training. But if you want to go for uh, any online certification, online courses also, uh, then uh, Coursera is one uh, platform which is good for learning data science. Uh, other than that, there are a lot of institutes around, uh, but the problem with them is like they charge a huge amount for training. Uh, and then uh, these will be like more uh, trainings which are given by uh, are given into uh, problems which are like non uh, projects which are non uh, industry based it is like a practice kind of thing so but uh, if any institute is being uh, providing you that kind of support where it provides you projects on real time industry led uh, data points then i think that will be good enough uh, that is what uh, i have for our session today yeah uh, uh, what is the piece of this course Smell by one question. Uh, like, uh, what are opportunities for freshers for data science? So, uh, yeah, so industry needs people who are in freshers as well. So, uh, it depends on uh, how you practice and how do you put yourself. But there are a lot of requirements for fresher, freshers yeah. as well because freshers have more ideas, yeah. able to do a lot of things. Uh, they are hardworking. So, uh, industry. Uh, is looking for both experienced professionals plus freshers. Uh, this year we rolled offer to 25 freshers for our, uh, just from our company. So um, companies are hiring freshers basically for their skills and aptitude for learning. So that is where a lot of opportunities will come into. But the only thing is like, how do you uh, get that first uh, opportunity into the field of data science for which you'll have to create and develop your profile uh, with that level of expertise to show that you have done things you know stuff that is where is will be required from your side but they'll they will be a lot of opportunities and there are a lot of opportunities for fresh yourself uh, i need to know what is the fees for your course How so we, we course shall we, we shall roll out another uh, hello message we shall roll out hello. another message hello i'm audible uh, yeah. yeah yeah can you hear me yeah, yeah. What is the fees? What is the fees for the course you're offering? We shall roll out another uh, message with the link for the registration, specifically for the uh, training, where we'll mention other details as well. So you 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 can wait for that. Uh, well, I have I a to ask uh, Like uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm having a around uh, eight years of experience. I, I think. Uh, this might be a common question uh, for present uh, in the session today. So, uh, like I'm from a different domain, uh, I have spent already eight years. Uh, so, how uh, uh, how can I, you know, put myself uh, into this uh, data science, uh, uh, you know, a separate domain uh, and uh, work accordingly with the uh, uh, as per the person who is having eight years or so and so experience. Uh, I think the best thing will be for you uh, or people who are already experienced, the best thing will be like to use your existing experience and then bring in that experience into the field of data science because data science is just like a tool uh, which can be used in any domain, any industry or any uh, problem that we are solving for. So the best thing for people who are already experienced is to map their existing skills 
uh, in terms of domain expertise or in terms of business expertise or in terms of any expertise that you already have for those eight years and then map those into data science related things, maybe in terms of domain or business or any of the relevant fields so that you uh, bring in that kind of a unique experience uh, into data science plus an understanding of data science, which will make your profile very strong. So it, uh, it depends on how you use or how you uh, bring in your existing experience into data science. That will make your profile or someone who is already an experienced candidate profile to be uh, strong into data science, which uh, someone who is not having those many years of experience will not have. So uh, if you have uh, worked for eight years, you might have worked for different kinds of domains or different kinds of problems that you have solved for, thinking how you, uh, you can use those different domains or different uh, things where you have worked to see how you can bring in data science to solve those problems or those problems in those domains more efficiently. Uh, once you know uh, the power of data science, how different tools, what technologies are there, how different tools work, you can think of how you can use these tools and technologies to solve problems in your domain of expertise that will make you uh, move easily. And the best way uh, or uh, a better way will be like move in within your company where a lot of companies are uh, creating those opportunities for movement for people into the field of data science instead of hiring people from outside. A uh, lot of opportunities are being opened internally for helping people move from one domain to another. So if that can be the case, that will be uh, an easier way or uh, maybe a slightly uh, easy way to move into. Uh, but that is what uh, you will have to uh, use your current expertise into all uh, the field. Jazakallah. Assalamualaikum, sir. Assalamualaikum, sir. Well, sir. Sir, for a person from non-IT background, uh, do you suggest that uh, we should go into business intelligence and data analyst uh, rather than data scientist and later move to data scientist role or we can directly aim for data scientist? Uh, it depends on uh, how you are able to uh, grasp things into data science. So if you have to do uh, any uh, uh, data scientist kind of a profile or a role, uh, it is not that you will not be able to do. It just depends on how you understand things and uh, take concepts into. And then from there onwards, uh, are you able to, uh, or if you are able to uh, do some coding in Python and SQL, uh, that will open your way. But uh, a slightly easier option to come into like will be uh, to directly uh, come into business intelligence kind of a role where you can learn a tool uh, of uh, a uh, tableau kind of a thing or a power bi and then move in as a power bi uh, or a tableau or a business intelligence uh, uh, person and then uh, slightly uh, slowly move into data science uh, because uh, to develop those skills it might take some time but uh, to learn tableau or power bi will be relatively easy and less time consuming so uh, if you are immediately trying to move into then you can uh, move into uh, business intelligence or any uh, uh, field which you is easier to uh, learn for you and then move into and then slightly as per your interest and as per your uh, skills that you developed into coding and uh, different uh, algorithms and technologies then you can move into uh, as a data scientist role but uh, it is never to undermine that data intelligence is a, a lower kind of a field or it is not well defined or uh, it is a uh, field be, uh, which is at a low level of data scientists. That is not the case. We have people uh, working in uh, different companies as expertise in business intelligence and uh, data analysts, which are also like a uh, well-respected field. It is not to undermine one field with another field. It's just that you have to see which field is your interest into. Uh, the thing with data scientists, like data scientists, is like uh, it will be uh, you are expected to know everything of all the different domains. But uh, for a business intelligence, just uh, tools like Tableau or BI uh, would be sufficient to get you a breakthrough. 
so but uh, so pay wise all of them are equal is it uh, are you saying that like if i can uh, excel in bi i'll be uh, comparable with data scientist in terms of uh, compensation uh it depends on uh, number of uh, years that you bring in and expertise you bring in uh, the thing is like uh, if you talk about pay wise uh not all uh business intelligence people will uh, get a pay similar to uh, data scientist profile but some business intelligence people will get uh, pay uh, higher than data science as well so uh, it is about uh, your skill and your expertise so people with very good expertise in uh, business intelligence will also on uh, uh, have packages more than data scientists uh, kind of thing but uh, uh, on a broader level uh, data scientists will have uh, a higher package compared to uh, the average of that industry data color uh, any other question yeah i have a question what is the career opportunities in medical field related to data science uh there are a lot of opportunities in medical field so a lot of companies uh, like dr reddy's pharma different uh, different pharma companies hire a lot of data scientists for uh, their processes or uh, in terms of uh, bringing in uh, new systems or processes machinery so a lot of uh, opportunities are present in medical uh, field so uh, recently i uh, was interviewed for one of the processes where like they were building in a system which will predict based on historical prescription of medicines we will be predicting what a uh, disease the customer or the patient is having or what disease he might have uh, building in and then there are a lot of lifestyle products which are coming in like uh, smart devices smart watches and all of those things so a lot of uh, research and a lot of opportunity in development of new pro- systems and products in the field of medical because people are moving towards better lifestyle and better health uh, healthy living kind of a thing so a lot of uh, opportunities are coming in if you uh, come up with if you come with a predefined or a existing experience of medical uh, then a lot of companies are hiring for uh, people in data science for medical domain uh, either in pharma or uh, uh health or uh, any of these companies uh, which uh, uses uh, customer or uh, people's data of uh, their uh, lifestyle and then based on their uh, prescribe uh, food habits or prescribe medicines or prescribe kind of a living or an exercise kind of a thing so a lot of uh, companies are coming up with new products which revolves around uh, the well-being of uh, health of the customers press pharma companies wants lot of data science to uh, help them uh, reduce the time which can uh, help them define experiments better to trials better or extract information from trials so that they take the right decision from those results of trials so uh, yeah lot of uh, opportunities are there in uh, med- medical field as well thank you thank you any other question <clears throat> if we attend this course sir will be able to crack job interviews after this like will be job ready for this uh, data scientist position yes so we'll be uh, doing projects uh, with real time uh, industry uh, data so uh, by the end of the course uh, that is what our target is <clears throat> so that people are ready to be into uh, doing uh, industry or job related uh, projects should be able to work on those projects in de- uh, independently that is what is the target uh, any opportunities in banking or finance field related to data science we have opportunities are present in all the domains and all the fields so it is not that uh, uh, any of the industry uh, doesn't need that as such so uh, if you see any of the data scientists uh, opening or data science openings on different website you see openings across domains and banking is one field where uh, it needs a lot of people to be uh, able to help them uh, with uh, resolving data because banking is one domain which has the most uh, 
data of a customer uh, that is where most of it comes into banking and the finance field but uh, it is not just restricted to that uh, it is like e-commerce marketing websites or any of these e-commerce or customer wherever there is data we have requirement for data science you can think of any domain which captures data will need data science so in terms of job uh, i think banking has the most uh, openings for this so so what is the next field which is having like uh, because uh, we if we are looking for sharia compliant jobs then we need to search for the second best possible uh, that is marketing marketing uh, that that will be marketing and uh, medical so uh, any of these uh, marketing in terms of any of the companies which does this customer analytics which uh, identifies uh, maybe like e-commerce websites or uh, uh, companies like uh, hotel chains uh, like marriott and all of those things which have lot of uh, customers interacting with their system so any of these zomato so uh, which has uh, customer information so you can think of any any domain which has systems which captures customers interaction uh, will come into customer analytics kind of a thing or a marketing analytics where we have uh, numerous uh, openings and a uh, lot of opportunities for data science because we want to give uh, customers a better experience without uh, creating a negative impact on him uh if i have 100 offers on zomato uh i cannot send all those 100 offers to every customer i will have to see what is the best offer to one customer because if i send 100 customer 100 offers to all of the customers customers will uninstall zomato immediately uh so so any any domain which captures customers information or which has uh customers interacting with them digitally uh will be a uh, an opportunity for a data scientist uh so marketing is one field and then we have lot of opportunities in consulting uh which uh, companies which consult different kind of uh, different uh, companies to solve their problem so not all companies can have their uh data science teams in house so many of these uh, consulting companies come up uh and then bring that expertise to give solutions to different companies so this is one uh, big domain which will help uh, get opportunity so marketing medical and then consulting i'm i'm seeing that lot of uh, data analyst uh, positions are being uh, offered as a remote working uh, this thing so do we have similar thing for data scientist as well or uh, it's all uh so this is uh, all of these uh, uh jobs are like remote only because uh, we do not have to uh, be present with uh, any of these customer interaction as, uh, as sorry to bother you one more time yeah so uh, it depends uh, on uh, uh, for the medical field what field we should choose for the medical domain Uh, what field as in uh, i did not get your problem for the medical domain what what uh, should we go ahead ahead for business analysis or data scientist what are the opportunities in medical field yeah so uh, all of the career opportunities that i talk about will be available or will be uh, feasible in all the domain because anywhere where there is data uh, we need data to be uh, processed uh, for its complete complete life cycle so we'll have all the opportunities in all the domains it's just that you'll have to see what uh, how you fit or where your interest lies or which is that field that uh, you are most comfortable doing it or you are most interested to do that and based on that you can uh, target for those things uh, it's not that uh, we'll have only specific kind of uh, profiles or jobs in uh, a uh, medical field so uh, we will have all the different uh, profiles which 
in medicine field as well because the data life cycle remains same across uh, different domains. So starting from capturing of the data till uh, using of data, uh, it remains same. So uh, it depends on how do you see or where your interest lies. And based on that, you can choose your field. OK, thank you. I think there is one question in the chat box. Uh, is there any freelancing opportunities if someone is in? Yeah, this? so uh, freelancing opportunity, there are uh, there are websites uh, which give freelancing opportunities, but for that, uh, the, the, uh, the problem is like, first you'll have to create your profile. Uh, based on that, you will get a lot of opportunities for freelancing. Many people do uh, freelancing, but the only thing is like, uh, uh, first you'll have to create your profile uh, once you create your profile you will get a lot of opportunities uh, and one of the best way or the easiest way for doing that is like uh, kaggle uh, kaggle is when website where you can go uh, create your profile and then uh, participate in different uh, competitions and then based on your results uh, you will get a ranking over there for each of the project that you are working in suppose you you take a competition in one project uh, based on that uh, project uh, or the competition that you took part in, suppose there were like one lakh people participating in that project. Uh, and then based on the results, you will get a ranking. And then you can use those ranking uh, in your profile to show your expertise or uh, your level of understanding of the concepts and uh, uh, how you solve different problems. And your, uh, that, is, uh, that, is, that will serve you as a digital profile for you. And then once you have a good profile, you will get a lot of opportunities and projects coming in your way because that is how freelancing works. You will have to first provide some kind of an assurance that uh, you are competent enough to do or solve this problem. So that is where uh, you will have to work on creating your profile. So there are different ways of creating profile. This is just one of the way. So you mentioned that uh, Python would be focused as a coding language. So we need to even expertise in SQL as well, like uh, for a data science, or is just uh, Python would be sufficient. So SQL is one skill which is common across all the uh, across all the career opportunities in data. So if you want to work in data, uh, you will have to know what SQL is and how do you work on extracting that data. Uh, you might not need expertise of a database administrator kind of a thing or a data uh, uh, expert expert in SQL, but you will have to know how SQL works and what are the different things that you can do based on that because any project that you work in an industry, uh, you will be uh, you will have to extract data from database and only then you will be working on uh, any other project. But unless you get that data, uh, in the format that you think that you require, uh, you will know that kind of an expertise in SQL because you cannot ask someone to extract the data that you need. Uh, some companies do have different teams helping data scientists uh, to extract the data, but uh, data uh, SQL is one skill that if you have as a data scientist will be more valuable because you know what data can be extracted and how it can be extracted uh, based on that, it will help you solve your problem in a better way. Uh, maybe you think uh, these are the, some of the points, data points that you need, but if you take someone else expertise to extract that information, he might not give you that data point from the data. And then your model will not, your model might not perform uh, that well uh, if you could have identified and extracted additional data points that you missed because you were not aware of uh, how to extract that information or how to create those features because features plays major importance in uh, getting those kind of results from data sets. So uh, it all depends on what data you feed to a data, uh, data science problem or a machine learning or a neural network kind of thing. Uh, it is like uh, if we have a major saying which says garbage in, garbage out. So if you put in garbage, even the best artificial neural network or deep learning model will uh, fee, uh, will give garbage as output. So uh, it depends on how you create that and um, feed that data in. And if you have to create and feed that data, 
SQL is one skill that is most desirable to have. Uh, other than that, people survive in as a data scientist without even knowing SQL. But uh, then uh, it is difficult because uh, sometimes you will not be able to build those models uh, with that level of accuracy or precision that you think uh, if you bring in some additional point of additional data points. So that, that is still. Uh, I think you are breaking this one, right? No, we are not able to hear you. Sorry? Uh, we were not able to hear you for some time. Oh, okay. Now you're fine, I think. Uh, okay, there is another question, question from Brother Khalid. So he said that he has done his CS from uh, CS in 2013, but after that he was into government, uh, preparing for government exams and taking tuitions to the student. He has basic knowledge of Python. Now he is interested in data science. I think uh, he can go ahead, right? Yeah, so uh, this is, uh, 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 you already have expertise uh, on an understanding of computer science or different algorithms or how different things work. Uh, you will be able to uh, understand the concepts of machine learning uh, in a much faster way because you are already uh, aware of data structures and different things in data science. Uh, so uh, you will be uh, in a, uh, you are actually, uh, you have actually taken some steps already uh, coming into data science. So uh, you need only uh, some more steps to be into data science. So uh, yes, you can uh, easily come into the field. So I think uh, if no other questions, uh, we can take I have one. I have a last question. Uh, the training fees will be a nominal fees. Yeah, or... yeah. I think uh, we'll just do the mashura for that, mm -hmm. and then we'll roll out. So that we need it to uh, have the engagement from both sides, right? So sometimes people start and then vanish, right? So. If they are committed, then it can go to the company. Any contact number or contact details? I, I have shared it. So I already shared the data, it in that box. Data, data analyst, uh, if you compare with data scientist, uh, what could be the main difference sir, with the role? The main difference will, uh, data analyst will not use uh, the different algorithms of machine learning. Uh, data analyst will uh, find or find patterns based on historical data. Uh, data analysis is like more of understanding what have happened uh, and not much into predicting what will happen kind of a thing. So data scientist goes into predicting, uh, kind of predicting kind of thing. Data analyst will go into uh, things which have already happened and then uh, do an analysis on those things. So it is like more of descriptive analysis which understands what have happened based on different things. Data scientists will go uh, into understanding what has happened and then help use that data to help what will happen, kind of a predictive analytics. Uh, one last question, sir. How much time do we need to learn data analyst course? Not data science. Uh, for a data analyst, uh, you actually just need uh, SQL and Python processing programming. Uh, other than that, you can just uh, use your domain expertise. So it's like uh, uh, one or two months will be uh, sufficient. Okay. Uh, how uh, in other uh, other institutes? How much will be the fees? How much? How much should be the fees? Uh, I uh, actually I inquired in XLR Academy from Bangalore. Uh, they said uh, thirty thousand something. Is that uh, justified? Uh, yeah, so it depends on the, uh, we can see uh, as uh, what is this. So it depends on uh, what different things are being uh, planned or what projects are being done or who that faculty is taking you through uh, and all of those things. So it depends on that. Uh, so they are covering uh, Tableau, MySQL, uh, basics of R language, basics, basics of Python and advanced and basic Excel. Uh, and some other uh, SAS, and there they, they will conduct 
to online projects they will give daily basis uh, assignments and we, we can access their content throughout the, uh, the lifetime and we can join their batches for whole years and number of batches we can join yeah so uh, actually i and, do not have any comments on this right now uh, uh, one last question okay. i have uh, boys 13 and 14 years of age uh, what do you think will be the starting point for them to get into this I think CBSC has uh, already uh, included data science as a uh, subject from 10th or 12th. So data science as a subject is introduced by CBSC, uh, which covers basics of data science. So uh, these days, uh, uh, the data science skills are being introduced from 10th onward. So it's not that you will... Uh, have to know all the algorithms or things, but uh, the main idea of data science, what it can do, how it works. So that is being already introduced by CBSC. Uh, so you can you can check that course uh, or subject which is being introduced by CBSC. Uh, it is already uh, designed and is being out. Okay, thank you. Sir, regarding the training program you're offering, sir, we'll be having interview preparation and CV help also like uh, to pitch for the jobs? Uh, we will uh, give the content uh, and training enough so that you know what stuff to do. So uh, if you do the complete training by yourself, if you uh, go through all the projects, you should be able to um, give the interviews and then crack those interviews. Uh, it's uh, The content will be designed in such a way that you are able to uh, go through the interviews. It is about you how do you um, do the concepts and complete those training so uh, if you do the projects yourself and not wait for other people to come and then use those projects so if you do those projects you should be uh, ready for uh, any of these interviews or calls sir i had a question like uh, i had recently attended a course on uh, business intelligence and advanced excel and are these uh, just tools which would help in data science or how is it? Uh, so uh, when, a, when, a, uh, when a data scientist or someone who in a data science develop some kind of a process uh, to maybe uh, the same example that I was telling about predicting of frauds, to make that project into production, we need uh, expertise of people across all the data life cycle so starting from uh, how it is being captured till reporting and dashboarding how it is being processed so uh, all of those different uh, people come together to make this project as successful a data scientist will be able to train that model and then come up with that model which will predict new orders or to be fraud or non-fraud but to make this into production we need people across all the different life stages of data to make that into production, right? From how it is being captured, how the data flows uh, into the model. Is it through APIs or is it through batch processing or how is it once it processed, it gives the prediction. Once it goes into prediction, how we display uh, or give the results, how we maintain the uh, performance of that through different kinds of dashboards, reports. So all of those comes together to make that project or a product successful. So uh, all of those come into that pipeline uh, of uh, making that project successful. Plus there will be a lot of requirements for basic uh, understanding of the business know-how as to what is happening and what's not happening. So that is where business intelligence comes into. Thank you. Sir, can you just explain the team constitution, sir, for this data science project as, a, as such we are saying, like we'll have business intelligence, we'll have data scientists, we'll have, I think, uh, ETL developer as well. So if a team of 10 people is there, so how many we can expect so that we can guess the number of uh, job requirements in that particular? So uh, as for solving a data science problem, we will not have teams across this. So... Uh, there will be teams uh, which are like working on ATL or data processing or 
uh, business intelligence. So those teams will be different, but for the project to make successful, a data scientist or a team of data scientists will design and develop one solutions. One that once that solution is tested to perform good, then we involve different. If you note how many uh, as such uh, requirement comes into, so a uh, lot of requirements are there uh, in terms of job openings, uh, more than data scientists, job openings in terms of volume, the number of openings that comes in. So data engineering uh, and then dashboarding, these are the two fields where we will have a lot of openings because uh, these two fields which talk about data also will be needed for all the other activities of data. So data engineering plus ETL and all of those tools which requires uh, for data engineering kind of thing or extracting load and transforming of data plus dashboarding. So dashboarding will not be done only for data science projects. Dashboarding will be done for all the business processes or all the business initiatives. So requirements for those will be higher than data scientists. So a project uh, for a data science project, uh, the the other domains of expertise will be needed. But if you check for do, total openings, so data engineering and uh, business intelligence are two fields where we'll have more requirement in terms of people. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I, I think um, as I said, uh, so we shall do mature on the. Uh, the details of the course, inshallah, and we'll soon roll out with the details, uh, giving the registration link. So those who are interested, you can ping me as well directly. I have shared my number. So, okay. So if no other question, I think uh, we are already close to the prayer time now. So let me just thank Ismail Bhai for a beautiful and excellent presentation, mashallah. So I could see a lot of people uh, pinging me personally as well, uh, showing the interest to join this course. So uh, you have really created interest in this uh, data, new new oil, right, data. So a lot of uh, real life uh, examples were shared and that has created a, like the need of learning this uh, course. Uh, and people have seen a lot of opportunities in this domain and uh, hopefully we'll have an engaging uh, course uh, going forward. So uh, it was good to see people from the college, uh, professors were there, college students were there and experts here. So, and I thank even Junaid Bhai who is working with Oracle. So when he saw that uh, Ismail Bhai already started it. So why don't we bring him, him to the EMFID and have other people also getting benefited out of it. So Alhamdulillah, that has uh, created this opportunity to listen, smile by. Uh, I think uh, you have given justice to your presentation today. Though we had initial hiccups uh, due to the technological uh, issues because uh, many people have gone on to the uh, technology, right? So still, though we are, we have gone so much advanced, but still uh, the scale up and performance, sometimes we see problems. So that creates uh, the opportunity to come up with the new uh, solutions to solve these uh, uh, issues, right? So expert can start thinking in that angle as well, uh, while we are uh, seeing any issues, right? So that, that's how people start getting ideas and they go for patenting their ideas. So uh, I'm sure people who are from research, people who are from industry, they can start thinking of getting a, a seamless solution for conducting even these sessions. So uh, I think uh, it was a, a wonderful Sunday today. So we have learned a lot of things. I think to digest these, we need uh, more time uh, to uh, get the taste of it. So if anyone is interested, as I said, you can ping me directly and then we'll uh, shall do Mashura and then uh, discuss about uh, other logistics as well. 
okay so course means we need commitment from both side right so uh, we 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 can't think of just starting and then and then uh, getting busy with other things so we need commitment for that so we'll we'll just work on that and then come back to you again so i request other experts here in this group to come and share your experience in this forum and also if you know any expert right, talking about any domain so you can reach out to us uh, introducing him so that we have the uh, those experts also for the larger crowd jazakallah khairan kaseera wa hasan jaza so jazakallah khair bhai jazakallah everyone thanks yeah, for joining it, it will be useful if you can ping me at my number because here once the uh, zoom ends so your messages i will not be getting it so please ping me at my number jazakallah khairan kaseera wa hasan jazakallah thank you all thanks everyone jazakallah jazakallah